Hey there, thanks for stopping by and welcome back to my channel, where I explore the connection between the mind and breath, occupational health and well-being, and behavioral health. Have you ever wondered what it's like for an Indian physiotherapist to be working in UK? Today, I'm going to deep dive into this, which is often overlooked, yet incredibly important topic to discuss. I'll explore the challenges they face, the valuable contributions they make, and the broad implications for their healthcare system. I have an undergraduate degree of physiotherapy, four years and six months in India. I have a master's in counseling and psychotherapy, which is a two year degree, and again in India. And uh, I have a master's in respiratory physiotherapy in uh, Dublin University and a master's in respiratory practice in University of Hertfordshire. So I had been through different educational systems and uh, I'm also been recognized as a fellow of higher education in 2019 through my clinical teaching to the staff and medical professionals and also to the university uh, students uh, while I was a lecturer in cardiac respiratory physiotherapy in the Cardiff University, which are uh, using pedagogies. And I have published few researches related to pulmonary rehabilitation, anxiety and depression. And I also published a, a teaching paper where I base my um, experience of teaching uh, using an active method, a hybrid team-based learning for the uh, students in Cardiff University the undergraduate students in Cardiff University uh, for the cardiorespiratory uh, module um, on the COPD. Some books related to breath work, again, anxiety and depression in COPD, uh, sleep work and uh, resilience and confidence. And so those are a few of my small creations. So I have a diverse experience and uh, from my personal experience and also from my Indian physiotherapy friends um, surviving in UK, um, I'm going to delve into this very important topic under the occupational health and well-being for Indian physiotherapists in UK. First, let me fill in with uh, the origin of physiotherapy in UK. Physiotherapy as a profession has a rich history dating back to the 19th century in UK. It evolved significantly after the World War I and two, as there was a higher demand for rehabilitation services for injured soldiers. The Chartered Society of Physiotherapy, CSP, founded in 1894, has played a pivotal role in shaping the profession. Today, UK physiotherapists work in diverse settings from the hospital to private practices, and the training includes a broad spectrum of specialities, including musculoskeletal, neurology, and cardiorespiratory physiotherapy. Now, let's divert and look into India, how physiotherapy evolved in India. In India, physiotherapy emerged as a recognized field in the mid-20th century with the formal education programs being established in 1950s and 1960s. The All India Institute of Physical Medicine and Rehabilitation established in Mumbai in 1955 was one of the pioneering institutions. Indian physiotherapy education is extensive and covers a wider range of specialities such as rehabilitation medicine, acupuncture, community medicine, yoga, and etc., reflecting the country's diverse healthcare needs. Indian physiotherapists are trained to provide a holistic care that integrates the physical, mental, and social health aspects. Imagine this, you are a highly qualified physiotherapist from India with a comprehensive education covering everything from rehabilitation medicine to psychology. You arrive in UK, eager to apply your skills and make a big difference in the patient care. But instead of being recognized for your expertise, you find yourself navigating a landscape where you are questioned and your potentials are often underestimated. Today, I'm going to explore why Indian physiotherapists, despite their extensive training, are often recruited at a lower levels compared to their British counterparts. We'll uncover the disparities in education, the gaps in recognition, and the mental health implications of this undervaluation. I'm going to first shed light on the educational disparity and the frameworks of qualification. In the UK, different frameworks govern higher education, such as higher education credit framework for England, managed by the Quality Assurance Agency for Higher Education, the Scottish Credit and Qualifications Framework, SCQF, and the Credits and Qualifications Framework for Wales. See, what are the use of these frameworks? These frameworks ensure the consistency in how universities quantify and recognize the learnings through credits, where one credit typically represents 10 hours of total learning effort, including the on-campus teaching and the self-study. Undergraduate degrees are divided into levels of four, five, and six, corresponding to the complexity and the depth of learning, with a bachelor's degree requiring 
per level, 120 credits, totaling 360 credits across three years, uh, which is a three-year program of physiotherapy in, in UK. And if it's an integrated master's degree, requiring 480 credits over four years. Now, just take a diversion and look into the Indian physiotherapy education. Indian physiotherapy program spans around four years and six months. However, based on my experience, it was four years and six months. I'm not sure about any subtle changes that happened recently. So according to this four years and six months program, um, a person to qualify as an Indian physiotherapy, they include 4,940 hours of on-campus teaching, 2,040 hours of supervised clinical practice, and 1,472 hours of compulsory internship, that is work experience, totaling around 845 credits, compared to where in UK you require only 360 credits. So this comprehensive uh, Indian physiotherapy education program includes curriculum that covers a wide range of subjects, including the rehabilitation medicine, acupuncture, yoga, community medicine, electrotherapy, EMG, microbiology, pharmacology, psychology, sociology, health and nutrition, alongside the common modules like anatomy, physiology, orthopedics, neurology, and cardiorespiratory. This extensive curriculum equates to more than a master's level qualification, level seven, according to the UK credit system, which typically requires only 480 credits um, in UK. Now, talking about the skills and contribution, interestingly, chronic respiratory disease is the third leading cause of hospital admission in England at the UK physiotherapy curriculum, provides less exposure to the cardiorespiratory skills, focusing on a more on the musculoskeletal and neural. And uh, the UK physiotherapy curriculum often misses the essential components of health, the physical, mental, and social integration, and the wider disparities exist across the curriculums in UK universities. Um, uh, university in Wales curriculum for physiotherapy might differ for the, the universities in England for the physiotherapy curriculum. This indicates a significant skills gap in cardiorespiratory care in UK. Indian physiotherapists bring a unique skill set to the table, uh, including the understanding the broader aspect of the health component, the physical, mental, and social that complements the UK healthcare needs. Yet, yet there is a wider gap in how their expertise is utilized, partic particularly in specialties like cardiorespiratory. Now, I'm going to shed the light on the recognition part and the recruitment challenges. In NHS, physiotherapist salaries are determined by their banding. The bands run from band five across to band nine, and the salaries are in pounds. So um, if you're taking the band five, which is a basic level, a newly qualified entry-level physiotherapist, uh, can and the band Band six uh, is a physiotherapist who have some experience and possibly some. And the band seven physiotherapist, which is a senior physiotherapist with experience and often supervised responsibilities. And in band A, there are several divisions, A, B, C, and D, before they could reach band nine. So, the, so coming back to the challenges and issues uh, of an Indian physiotherapy in UK setting. So despite their IO qualification, IO credit system of their curriculum, Indian physiotherapists are often recruited at a band five or a band six, even with the extensive experiences in UK. And they have to work harder to prove themselves to reach a band seven level compared to their British counterparts. If you're recruited on a band five, considering the cost of living and the salary scale, uh, which uh, translates to be earning capacity of a band five is 28,000 to 34,000 between that range per year, um, a monthly salary of 2,300 to 2,800 pounds per month before taxes so that and a band sick is uh, not having a major difference the salary ranges uh, for a monthly is sure 2900 to 3500 um, it's about 400 500 pounds higher than the band's five levels um, before the taxes and uh, this disparity along with the continuous drain of money in the name of professional recognition the registration with HCPC involves uh, a one-off scrutiny fee of uh, 500 
139.65 and an annual registration fee of 98 pounds point 12 and a membership with csp requires a chartered society of physiotherapy one of joining fee of 20 pounds an annual fee of 228 pounds raises an important question why this financial burden persists in healthcare in the uk but not necessarily in other sectors in it or management or politics where a continuous professional accreditation is not mandatory for leadership roles or uh, the daily performance of their roles. Now, moving across the underemployment and exploitation concerns, um, many Indian physiotherapists in the UK face underemployment, where they are not able to utilize their full set of skills or work in their desired specialty areas. This underutilization of talent leads to frustration, reduced job satisfaction, and impacts their overall career progression and financial stability. In addition, they all hallucination from the British counterparts. They are undereducated and exploited within the UK health care system. And this situation perpetuates further feelings of frustration, demotivation, and unfair treatment, and many of the Indian physiotherapists suffer in silence. So, what all this boils down and leads an Indian physiotherapist in the UK healthcare system, the cost of mental health implications, the constant undervaluation and lack of recognition have a significant mental health implications for Indian physiotherapists. Many experience heightened stress, frustration and decreased job satisfaction. This affects the overall well-being and contributes to the challenging work environment. From my personal experience, I have seen people being brought into the workplaces with less experience and less qualification to the same role and uh, through recommendation. So where is the system going? Now, let me shed light on the human rights and freedom of choice. Um, matter. It's crucial to address the human rights aspects of questioning Indian physiotherapists motives for being in UK. Everyone has the right to choose the place where they want to live and work and questioning these choices based on the nationality or the origin is discriminatory and against the fundamental human rights principle. We all actually experience a raised mental health pandemic around in UK and globally and we all talk about gratification, appreciating other people and expressing gratitude, those sort of things. But how are Indian physiotherapists being expressed, appreciated their contribution? So when we talk about the crediting the work and contributions, another, another critical issue faced by an Indian physiotherapist in the UK is a lack of acknowledgement for their work and contributions. There are instances where their efforts are undervalued or their credits are taken by their British counterparts, further exacerbating the feeling of underappreciated and exploited. And cultural perspective. In Indian culture, there is a strong emphasis on the collective teamwork and humility. Indian physiotherapists often bring these values into their professional practices, fostering a collaboration and a patient-centered care. However, these cultural traits are sometimes misinterpreted and exploited in the UK healthcare system, leading to their contributions being undervalued or taken for granted. So I would like to put a question out here. Is there a misconception that Indian physiotherapists are only in UK for financial reasons and thus would be satisfied with lower grades. Moreover, there is a lack of data on how many Indian physiotherapists hold a decision-making positions in UK. Uh, when I talk about decision-making positions, uh, from band eight across to band nine. So when Indian physiotherapists challenge the norms and introduce innovations, they sometimes mislabeled as mis non communicative As I wrap up, it's clear that the contributions of Indian physiotherapists in UK are significant, determined by their curriculum of uh, physiotherapy program and their experiences. Yet their journey is marked with hurdles and challenges. By acknowledging their qualification and promoting an inclusive work environment, we can ensure that every physiotherapist, regardless of their origin, receive the recognition and the respect they deserve. After hearing this from me, what do you believe the answer we are missing? Are we talking about this enough? Put that in the comment box below. From my qualification and experience as a respiratory physiotherapist and a psychotherapist, I would like to suggest few solutions to address the issues. Creating an open communication challenge. Encouraging environment where the physiotherapist feels safe to express their thoughts, concerns, and ideas without, without fear of retribution. And providing a supportive leadership. Leaders should be trained to recognize and address the unique challenges faced by the Indian physiotherapist, providing the mentorship and advocacy. Offering uh, sufficient professional development opportunities, ensuring that the continuous uh, development is relevant and recognizes the prior learning and experience of an Indian physiotherapist.
promoting an inclusive and diverse culture uh, in the workplace to celebrate the diversity and also their contributions uh, with equity. Encouraging a peer support network where um, support groups are facilitated where an Indian physiotherapist can share the experience and provide mutual support helping to elevate the feelings of isolation. So my advice to an Indian physiotherapist in the UK is to stop using your energy to worry and use your energy to believe in yourself and create positive opportunities of success, love yourself and grow infinite mindset, glow your passion, manifest positive life and heal your trauma from abusive people. Thank you for watching until the end of this video. If you enjoyed the today's discussion, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my channel for more insightful content. Let's continue to advocate fairness and recognition in healthcare professions worldwide. Until next time, take care and stay healthy. Signing off, Devi Sundar.